All right, hey everybody, uh, EG51 Goose here. Actually, I guess I should say CAG Goose because uh, we did change your name. Uh, and CAG, I think, stands for Carrier Air Force uh, Ground Attack, I believe. Don't hold me to that 100%, but uh, I know the first two are right. I'm just not sure about the last one. I think the last one, the G, refers to the helicopters. Because um, we did, uh, we started to expand out a little bit and allowing different airframes into it instead of just 1814 and Harrier or just carrier stuff. We started to expand out, allow some of the Air Force things in, uh, which is kind of nice. So, anyways, what I wanted to get up to here uh, is. Uh, VR with hand tracking, so I wanted to show how easy this is to set up. Uh, so would, you know, I figured I'd just do it from scratch. Okay, so this is uh, now my setup that I have. Um, so I got hand tracking, uh, and that's the white cable you can see on my HP Revive headset here. Uh, so I mounted it on the front. Obviously, because when you look left and right, you need the camera to see your hands. Um, and if I have the joystick and throttle on the desktop, when you're moving your hands, you're punching it, right? So I mounted it into my chair. Uh, this is the wind wing uh, joystick and throttle controller, and this is the F-18 throttle controller. Hey guys, it's just... Uh, you know, I haven't really used my camera much for doing video, and the first few I've done come out blurry, and I think I've got it now where at least you can uh, read what the labels are saying and stuff without it being blurry, so I just thought I would go over it again. Um, yeah, so this is the F-18 uh, hand controller by Wind Wing, and... Uh, up here we have this is our launch bar. Let's see if I can get this to. No, I can't now. I have to hold the right height or it's just going to go back to being blurry again. There we go. So you can see, uh, you know, as like I say, this is our launch bar. Uh, nice tight switches. Your wing fold three stages. Push it in to lock them. Push it in to unlock. Flip it up to open them up. It flaps way over here, three-way switch for the flaps, quite nice. This uh, this guy here is for the HMD, so it's kind of the same thing as turning the knob in the airplane. Um, right, as you come down over here, to push the throttle forward a bit here. Whoops, yeah, <laughs> I took my light away, I'm trying to get some light on this, sorry. Okay, here we go. So we have our air to ground, air to ground mode selection, air to air mode. Uh, this guy here, this one here, ain't set on anything yet. Uh, so I have him available to set him on something. And then, of course, uh, let's see if we go on the joystick. So you have your finger lifts. So when you lift one or both. Uh, this guy here is the TDC uh, for the TDC cursor uh, and your flare pod and stuff to move the cursor around and you push it in for the TDC depress. All right, uh, this guy here, I'm not sure if you'll be able to read it, but this is our master arm switch, uh, ejection, and then of course back here we have some of the autopilot stuff. As you can see, this is F15, uh, F16. But I'm pretty sure you could program these in the 18 uh, to the autopilot uh, stuff that you need, uh, which would be cool. The nice thing I found about the joystick that I was really scared about when it came to hooking it up was if I, uh, when I did it, I'd have to set all this stuff up in the airplane again. <laughs> Just trying to get around the side shot here, get some light on the side of this, uh, that I'd have to do it in the airplane again. And as it turns out, I don't. Uh, so that was quite nice. Uh, that uh, it's quite nice that I didn't have to. All this stuff was already set up, or most of it was. So this one up here, forward and back, your chaff and flares. Then I have up and down, which ain't assigned in. I can. This one here. This is my um, radio switch. Selecting the four radios that we have in the Hornet. Uh, down here on the bottom, of course, is the speed brakes. Uh, 
the three-way switch for that and then here we have our cage uncage button uh, and then there is a toggle switch uh, this button up here in the front this is like for your uh, AT flare um, and geez, I forget what this one is already I haven't had much time playing with it as for sure and then there is a three-way toggle switch here on the very side of it uh, again as I said as it's turning out that's very very nice and I really like it um, and then over here what I did is I got the uh, F16 I think they call it the EX joystick uh, which comes with the extra two hat switches here on the side so this has seven hat switch uh, seven five-way hat switches on it uh, which is really nice uh, I don't have much programmed on this I, I got I've got my trim on this one and I have a zoom in zoom out on that one and then of course this is just for scrolling your view and and this one here I've got on my sensor I put my sensor controls on this one uh, so the nice thing with having five way hat way switch is you can have your sensor control up down left right and then your uh, sensor depress button on the same hat switch instead of having to have depress on something else so that's kind of nice the other thing is you can see this thing shakes pretty easy it's it's pretty soft but man she is really um, accurate when you're when you're in the game flying uh, it's really quite nice you know I can put the autopilot on and swing my chair and you can see as I swing the chair the joystick kind of bounces around but it won't kick the autopilot off so it is quite nice all right so as I mentioned I got that mounted on my hand tracker mount on my headset that doesn't interfere with the front sensors I mean it kind of looks like it would but it doesn't um, so I got a lot more to do with the hand tracking or learn about the hand tracking yet and then the other thing was is with the headset here this cable is pretty thick and it's pretty heavy and it rides on your shoulder and when you're moving and stuff you can feel it so that's why I kind of hung it up in the air uh, for now on a piece of string while I you know trying to figure out how to get this to work and right now the way I have it it works really nice of course this one here is for the hand tracking uh, so you know when it's on the head it's, it's, it's like this it's not riding on your shoulder which is quite nice um, you know and then again with the chair I mean I just made these mounts out of two by four and bolted them to the side of the chair uh, I have a welder friend that uh, you know if I like this it works out good he said he'll make me up some metal brackets uh, to put them on which would be a lot nicer because as you can see the throttle is kind of twisted a bit sideways it's kind of leaning out it's leaning this way so I'd be able to straighten that out and then probably be able to put it on so that I can slide them on and off if I'm not using them uh, which would be quite nice um, so I unplugged these because what happens is that when it lights up you can't see um, <laughs> it goes blurry I don't know why my camera won't pick it up but my camera doesn't like to pick it up if I uh, have them unplugged where the heck did the other cord go oh man you would be kidding me <laughs> alrighty so get this guy a plug in so you can see the lights okay so you can see how it all lights up there uh, so so it's, like I said it's quite a nice joystick and throttle setting cost a bit of money so what I was gonna do now is I'll hop into the game and kind of show you guys what the hand tracking looks like okay so the first thing we're gonna do here is plug in the headset And that'll pop up the mixed reality and then you have to put your headset on to set it up so I got to take this one off I'll put my other headset on Okay, so we get that set up. Uh, I don't know why, for some reason, today she's being a little stubborn. 
normally just pop it up, put it on, uh, do your thing, and you're good to roll. Okay, so the next thing we want is, sorry, is to, I'm going to plug in my hand tracker. So just plug that in. First USB cable, see now it tells you the hand tracker's up. So, and, uh, so this is the hand tracker, which when you boot the computer up, it's automatically there. You just have to plug it and turn it on. And as you can see, uh, that's the hand tracker. And as you can see, there's the hand. Uh, you can hide the skeleton part if you want. It's up to you. Uh, I'm kind of leaving open it now until I get my gesture set up. So you can see as you touch different points of your fingers. Uh, so, going to take a little, little bit of work. Um, so the other thing we can bring up on this is this guy here, the OpenXR Toolkit hand-to-hand -hand tracker, and this brings up all the sliders for uh, adjusting your knuckles and stuff, and you know, so you can adjust your stuff for grips and that. This is on default, and we're just going to leave it that way. Uh, you don't have to have this up for it to work. Uh, but you can use this and as you set it you can set this as you're playing so you can see the results right away You don't have to keep rebooting the game, but we're not going to play with that I just wanted to show how easy it is uh, to do with this stuff. All right, so uh, We got our hand tracker up and going we got our VR going so now we're going to go to our uh, DCS VR shortcut That I showed how to create in the previous video All Right popped into the VR uh, so I'm gonna take this headset on put my VR on and then I'll get this one back on okay I'm back So you guys can't see the hand in the screen yet. I'll just go to the setting specials here. So, um, and I just have to go to leap motion. I say enable. Now you guys will be able to see it on the screen. <laughs> just trying to make sure you can see it on the screen. You should be able to. And, um, Let's go to the mission editor, pop up the mission here. Uh, let's just go to the. Alright, we're just gonna go hop into an airplane here. Real quick, like. Well, maybe real quick. <laughs> we're at the speed of the computer. Um, so first off, we'll just go hop into an F-18 here. Okay, make sure it's on the ground. <laughs> yeah, wait for it to draw the stuff in. All right, let's hit fly. Okay, so now as you can see, there's uh, our hand tracker. So basically it works like a pointer. Uh, you can point at things and then uh, depending on your gestures you do how stuff works right and um, dang it <laughs> oh man I wanted to show this but uh, it goes underneath my desk is in the way oh I know what I need to do this is also not lined up properly so for whatever reason, it had my cockpit sitting way down low, so I couldn't show you what I wanted to show you. So, I'm not sure what the gestures are in here uh, for using this. So, you see, I got the knob where I can twist it, uh, but now it let go. So, as you can see, I uh, just twist on my wrist to turn it. You know, guys are blabbing on uh, Discord. I forgot to turn it off as usual. So now, see, for whatever reason, I can't let go of it. So <laughs> I got to figure out the what. <coughs> sorry, what the gestures are there. I think I got let go. But what I think is neat is I can come to the joystick, 
in here see that I can grab it and I can actually you can actually fly the plane like this with the stick and that one I got is the palm one and let go and then it's the same with the throttle here I come over top the throttle see I can put my hand on it and come on well I could yesterday I don't know why I can't move it today oh I might not be able to move it because I don't have the plane started that's probably why because it's in the the lock positions uh, let's see if I can get that to slide up if I do this oh there we go and I'll do it to this one I just didn't really start it. there we go there we go see you can grab the throttle and work the throttle this way too which is kind of cool so that that's the only thing I know oops how to do for sure right I, <laughs> I'm, I'm hitting my desk now that's the, the problem with that so I can do you can do it with a pointer but I have to figure out what the gesture is to grab it and hold on and twist it so I got some work to do with that but the whole point of this video was to show you uh, how easy it is to use the hand track now I don't know why it keeps going to that knob all the time obviously uh, like I say I got to play around with the settings and uh, fine-tune it and stuff uh, which you know it's probably going to take a little bit of time to do that but again as I said the whole point of this video was to show uh, how easy it is uh, when you have VR and even the hand tracking uh, to set up I mean there's you know it just it only took a couple minutes actually to get it going so there's no big deal um, I don't know I had this <laughs> I had some of the things working in here the other day when I first tried this but of course now I'm not having uh, any luck at all other than doing this you know so I gotta get uh, the other gestures I, th I thought it was index uh, doing something here so it's kind of neat because uh, you can switch between your hands I know you can do things like this the palm and and stuff um, but obviously I definitely got more playing to do with that and uh, when I get that kind of figured out and set up uh, working better I'll be back to to uh, I'll do a video up showing on uh, how it's working how that's if it's working very well or if it's not working very well if hand tracking is actually something worth getting all right so uh, i am cut this short so until then um, we'll see you guys in the next video and I'm gonna say uh, cat goose out for now